Gary Tibbetts. I'm the uh, Special Assistant to Congressman Buchanan, Law Enforcement Coordinator for the District, and uh, Field Rep for Manatee County. So I welcome you here. I just want to say a few things beforehand, just when we have, uh, after the ceremonies and everybody's received their awards, don't go running off. We want to get a group picture up here, and that's why we have this uh, uh, space all cleaned out so that we can get a nice group picture afterwards. When you are announced and coming up to get your award from the Congressman, it'll be over here. The Congressman will be standing there. We'll get a nice presentation, nice picture while you're getting uh, your award. So um, with, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dave Charnies. Dave is a special uh, agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, he's a great friend. He's part of our selection committee. And he's going to lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and introduce our congressman. David, thank you. You can all uh, stand and take the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A U.S. Representative Vern Buchanan is co-chair of the bipartisan 29-member Florida congressional delegation and currently serves on the powerful House Ways and Means Committee, which has jurisdiction over tax policy, international trade, health care, welfare, social security, and Medicare. The congressman is chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee, a key watchdog panel of investigative authority over issues under the full committee's jurisdiction, including health care, the IRS, welfare, Social Security, and Medicare. Vern Buchanan grew up with five siblings in a blue-collar household in a small town near Detroit, Michigan. He served six years in the Army, uh, excuse me, the Air National Guard, and worked his way through college. The self-made businessman is a respected leader in Florida's business community. He chaired both the Florida Chamber of Commerce and the Sarasota Chamber of Commerce, and he is also a member of the board of the U.S. Chamber, and in 2005 was inducted into the Tampa Bay Business Hall of Fame. In addition, Congressman Buchanan is a dedicated philanthropist, committing himself to diverse community causes, including the Boys and Girls Club, Community Foundation of Sarasota County, the Walk to Cure Juvenile Diabetes, the American Heart Walk, Moat Marine Laboratory, and the Ringling Museum of Art. A husband, father, and grandfather, Congressman Buchanan lives on Longbow Key with his uh, wife of 40 years, Sandy. Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan have two grown sons, James and Matt. They also have three grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Vernon Buchanan. Well, I want to thank you, Dave, for working with us on the selection committee and all the work you do. But I uh, just wanted to quickly, before I get started on some of my prepared remarks, uh, uh, what happened in Washington last week. If we didn't have two police officers with our, my dear friend, Sandy's here tonight, but we're very good friends to the family, Steve. Uh, we've done a lot of different things together. We came in together. Uh, they could have very well shot 10 or 15 members of Congress, which in, historically uh, only one has actually ever died. So it just gives you some sense. Uh, they were lucky to, they got them there any later, probably would have been clearly dead. I mean, I think it was an AR-15 or something comparable, hit him in the hip, wasn't a clean, got penetrated his organs and everything. So he's had multiple surgeries. So all of us, uh, I'm sure, keep him in a thought and prayer. But he gets back to uh, what you guys do every day. In fact, Steve has a security detail. If he wasn't there, he's the third in command or third in charge of our leadership. Uh, if he wasn't there with his detail, there was a 20-foot high fence. There was no way out. Uh, the guy's sitting there with a, a rifle. It's unbelievable what could, unimaginable what could have possibly happened. So, and again, what happens there, what's happened with our politics today, you get someone that, and a lot of us fear this, Democrats and Republicans, all the rhetoric, plenty of blame to go around on both sides. But you get someone that 
tips over uh, from south, southern Illinois. Uh, really hated, uh, you know, Trump, but hated this and hated that. Uh, obviously mentally ill, but just snapped, and then you end up with a scenario like that. So, but again, I uh, just uh, I'm sure all of us have been pretty devastated about it, and the tone of our politics has to change. As they mentioned, I co-chair the delegation. We're a bipartisan delegation in Florida, the third largest delegation. Uh, but we should be able to get things done, working together, and take the politics out. And the reason for the politics, unfortunately, is about the next election, about power, who's going to control what agenda. And so the politics gets, unfortunately, very nasty. I didn't want to spend much time talking about it, but it's something that's been devastating to a lot of us that are close to uh, Steve and his family. But I want to uh, thank Dave again for the introduction and welcome everybody to the 6th Annual uh, Congressional District 16 Law Enforcement Awards. Uh, so I also want to thank Gary. You know, what Gary didn't mention, it works with our office in the back. I want to give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. I got to give credit where it's due. It was Gary's idea. He was a law enforcement officer for 25 years, but I, as many of you know, I was in business at 1,200 employees before I decided to get into this crazy business. But uh, I can tell you, it's not always about a little bit more money. It's nice to have a little bit more money. It's nice sometimes to get some appreciation, and uh, I think a lot of people deserve that. I established a Congressional Law Enforcement Awards to give special recognition to law enforcement officers, departments, or units for exceptional achievement. Law enforcement is a demanding profession that requires sacrifice, courage, and a dedication to serve others. Every day, brave men and women put themselves in harm's way to enforce the laws of our society and protect public safety. They deserve our gratitude and respect. I believe these awards are a fitting tribute to our officers and a reminder of the important role they play in our community. And I'll say this, I've said it before publicly. I think what's happened the last two or three years uh, where they've kind of demonized uh, somewhat the profession is uh, it's just, I can't even imagine uh, what they've done with the press. Because there's always a couple of people, but even in certain scenarios, they make you look in, uh, in a bad situation. I know this, that uh, sheriffs and police departments uh, in the country, almost a million officers, and men and women sworn, without them, we wouldn't have a civil society. And uh, so I appreciate from the bottom of my heart what you do every day. I appreciate the law enforcement agencies that made nominations for this year award. I also like to in, uh, thank the independent panel that judged them. Former Sheriff Police Chief John Lewis, retired NYPD Detective Ken Kleinlein, Captain Deborah Caspar of, of Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, Lieutenant Paula Newman of the Mantee County Sheriff's Office, and Special Agent Dave Sarney of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I would now like to have them come forward and help me assist in this year's awards. Good evening. First one I'm going to start with is Mantee County Special Investigation Division. Mantee County is the epicenter of overdose deaths in the state of Florida. The Special Investigation Division has deployed an aggressive st strategy to help reduce the flow of these dangerous drugs to our streets. These strategies include having investigators respond to the scene of all overdoses and deaths to ensure that evidence is obtained for further investigation, utilizing adv advanced technologies to find those supplying to those who have died or experienced an overdose, working with state and federal prosecutors housed within the division to ensure justice is served to the full extent of the laws, successful partnerships with other law enforcement agencies, including Brainton Police Department, Sarasota Police Department, Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, Drug Enforcement Agency, FBI, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Homeland Security Office, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives, and the Internal Revenue Service. Educating and sharing the latest intelligence with the frontline deputies to equip them with knowledge to perform their jobs safely and effectively. Aggressively recruiting sources to help identify those selling heroin and fentanyl. 
daily briefings to prioritize cases that lead to the capture of traffickers selling dangerous drugs, actively participating with community stakeholders monthly at the Addictions Crisis Task Force meeting, working with a drug court coordinator if a person has experienced an overdose and it is an active participant in drug court, participating in public forums aimed at educating the public on the cries faced within our community. In 2016, the division was responsible for arresting 254 people on 1,014 charges. Many were distributors of opioids like heroin, fentanyl, and carfentanil. Emphasis is put on those distributing illegal narcotics and not those suffering from the disease of addiction. Detectives with this division are required to work all hours of the day and to be on call, ready to respond to situations that unfold without any notice. The risk is very high, but the determination and commitment of the members of the division is unmatched, which in turn makes our community a safer place to live. The Manatee County Special Investigation Division is presented the Congressional Unit Citation Award. Next, we have Detective Justin Warren of the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. Detective Warren of the Manatee County Sheriff's Office Special Investigations Division has gone beyond his normal duties in service to others through his work as a narcotics investigator and a member of the crisis intervention team. He has been involved in many complex undercover investigations. In one case, he made several purchases of cocaine and heroin from two different dealers working together. One of the dealers was taken into custody during a traffic stop. Due to Warren's excellent interview, the subject provided information related to murders committed by the Nathaniel Napoleon, Napoleon Harris Group, a particularly violent gang operating out of Manatee County. Due to this information, six members of that gang were later convicted of murder and numerous traffic, drug trafficking charges. During another investigation, a search warrant executed at the residence of three brothers trafficking in heroin resulted in the discovery of 54.4 grams of heroin, three firearms, and over $21,000. One of the brothers was arrested and charged with armed trafficking in heroin and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Furthermore, their organization was dismantled. During a time of significant overdose deaths, Warren interviewed surviving victims he was able to piece together information and target potential heroin dealers. Warren stopped a vehicle driven by one of those dealers, Jamal Matthews. Yesemia Crumity and three children were also in the vehicle. As a result of this stop, Matthews was charged with armed trafficking in heroin, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and child neglect. Charges are pending on Crumity. In another case, Warren was able to identify Mikkel Carnegie as a heroin dealer connected to overdose deaths. He located and apprehended Carnegie, who was charged with possession of heroin and fentanyl with intent to sell within 1,000 feet of a church, possession of marijuana, possession of paraphernalia, resisting arrest with violence, battery on a law enforcement officer, and driving with a suspended license. There were also outstanding mm -hmm. felony warrants on him. Warren was at one point assigned to coordinate the Tampa office of the DEA meth group's effort in Manatee County. This was a 24-7 on-call assignment. During this time, two major arrests were made that impacted Manatee County. In one case, the task force stopped a drug trafficker from delivering 10 kilos of meth back to the Manatee area, and the meth was seized. Another trafficker took delivery of one kilo of heroin in Manatee County to deliver to New York. Upon arrival in New York, he was stopped by DEA, and the heroin was seized. In another case, Warren received information that Travis Hickman, a 15-timed armed felon on probation, was staying at local motels and selling drugs from his vehicle. Warren conducted surveillance and eventually observed and stopped Hickman, who fled the scene but was quickly apprehended. 
Through further investigation, Hickman was charged with armed trafficking in cocaine, armed trafficking in oxycodone, and possession of a firearm by convicted felon, possession of cocaine with intent to sell, and possession of controlled substance. Warren was also able to tie package deliveries of methamphetamine from California to a local organization that was receiving multiple pounds of meth. As a result, this organization has been dismantled and multiple indictments will be brought forward from numerous traffickers. As a crisis intervention negotiator, Warren was called to the scene of a suicidal subject with a firearm. With disregard for his own safety, he made contact with the subject gained the subject's confidence and after over an hour was able to convince him to put the firearm down and come out of the residence and where the subject was taken into custody. Warren convinced the subject not to take his own life. Warren is tireless and continually goes beyond his normal duties to serve others and the community. Detective Warren is presented the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. And this is Major Jordan receiving it on his behalf. <laughs> okay. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office Associate Service Award. Pastor Patrick Miller, Pastor Vincent Smith, Dr. Harriet Moore, Jeffrey Gallant, and Almuda Hawks have distinguished themselves through their collaborative efforts with the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office to develop the Sheriff's Rifle Policing Strategy Workshops in 2015 and 2016. The citizens who have experienced this workshop and countless others exposed to press and social media accounts now have a better understanding of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office through this program. During these workshops, approximately 300 guests and or mentors experience firsthand what it feels like to be a 21st century law enforcement officer by negotiating multiple scenarios based on actual law enforcement activities. At the end of each workshop, the guests and mentors indicated they learned a great deal about the law enforcement decision-making process and the day-to-day -day operations of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. The members of this group have an extensive knowledge of the social issues that underlie crime. They have an established infrastructure for addressing human needs within their own organizations, and they've created an atmosphere in the Sarasota community that makes law enforcement more successful. They've been able to rally the community to reduce crime and disorder, but they also serve as a mechanism for ongoing problem solving by discussing the important role of law enforcement to their community. This group of individuals has played a visible and ongoing role in improving relations between the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office and the community. This collaboration has made Sarasota County a better place to live. Pastor Miller, Pastor Smith, Dr. Moore, Mr. Gallat, and Mr. Hawks are presented the Congressional Law Enforcement Associate Service Award. Next, we have Sergeant Robert Armstrong of the Sarasota Police Department. Last year, Sergeant Armstrong took over the Sarasota Police Department Street Crime Unit, including the department's Turn Your Life Around program. His dedication has taken the program to another level. Tyla identifies victims as sexual trafficking and provides them with resources and strategies to help them escape the sex trade industry. Tyla provides an alternative to arresting prostitutes by addressing the root cause. Armstrong continues to pave the path to success with the, the, this program through traveling throughout the state of Florida to train other police departments and nonprofits specializing in human trafficking on Tyla. Partnering with CELA Freedom to provide a four hour training to all new police officers at the Sarasota Police Department on domestic sex trafficking mentoring all new incoming street crime unit officers on the mission of Tyla, attending local and statewide human trafficking coalitions and task force meetings, encouraging an officer in his unit to create a short but profound video geared to law enforcement about the devastation of domestic human trafficking and the Tyla program, reaching out to every hotel in the city of Sarasota 
with educational material on how to recognize human trafficking and the role the service industry plays in the cycle. Working with the state attorney's office on an initiative to deter traffickers and Johns from committing solicitation crimes and creating an unprecedented method of reaching out to victims of online human trafficking. Armstrong's work has gained both local and national attention in the media. Sergeant Armstrong has presented the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Next, we have Detective Richard Wilson of the Palmetto Police Department. Detective Wilson has demonstrated an outstanding work ethic, dedication, and professionalism, a sensitivity towards crime victims, and a tenacious pursuit of offenders. For example, Wilson recognized a pattern in the victimization of migrant workers and asked that their case be assigned to him. He identified and connected a suspect to crimes in several counties, including Manatee, Sarasota, Hardy, DeSoto, Collier, and Hendry. He coordinated with other law enforcement agencies to arrest the suspect in August of 2016. Another noteworthy case involved the investigation of a sex crime perpetrated upon a very young girl. Wilson was able to gain the trust and cooperation of a reluctant family, track down the suspect in another country, and gain a complete confession, which resulted in a conviction and saved the young victim from the trauma of court testimony. The detective's unwavering commitment to his duties and the community reaches a very high level of professionalism. Detective Wilson has presented the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Next, we have Officer Alan Bores of the Holmes Beach Police Department. Officer Bores has continuously excelled in his duties as a patrol officer. In 2016, he made 69 arrests, including 34 DUIs, and was chosen to train to become one of four drug recognition experts in Manatee County. His other accomplishments include, on January 1, 2016, he responded to an occupied home burglary in progress. His quick actions led to the arrest of the suspect, keeping the occupants of the home safe. On April 13, 2016, he stopped a vehicle and located marijuana, cocaine, meth, and drug paraphernalia. The driver was arrested on multiple charges. On October 7, 2016, he located two suspects who were wanted and charged with several burglaries and property damage cases in Holmes Beach. Officer Boards has presented the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Okay, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the how I pronounce this name. Deputy Kevin Smithana, am I even close? Okay, <laughs> from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. On October 11, 2016, a female victim was shot in the chest and killed. Responding units quickly voiced an alert for the suspect in the vehicle he was driving. Deputy Smithana began an extensive search and found the vehicle in a parking lot. He then saw the suspect returning from the nearby woods where he hid the weapon. Matana pulled into the parking lot and strategi strategically positioned his cruiser behind the suspect's vehicle. Smetana single-handedly engaged the suspect and took him into custody without incident. Deputy Smetana is presented with a Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Next, we have Officer Jason Natal from the Bradenton Police Department. 
On October 6, 2016, while stopped at a traffic light, Officer Natal noticed a family sitting in distress beside a convenience store. He checked on the welfare. With tears in her eyes, Lindsay Milbert told him that she, her husband, and their three children were homeless. They had left West Palm Beach, Florida with a false promise of housing and a job for her husband in Bradenton. Natal brought them to a pizzeria, paid the bill, and went in search of shelter for them. Salvation Army staff told them that they could come at 6 p.m., but due to an impending hurricane, they all would have to sleep on the floor. Furthermore, her husband would have to stay on the men's side of the shelter, separated from the rest of the family. The Milberts also had a dog with them, which presented an additional problem. As a husband and a father, Natal did not feel comfortable with that and located a vacant room at a nearby hotel. He paid for it with money he withdrew from his own personal account. Another officer contacted the Humane Society, which sheltered the dog. Natal then went to pick up food and diapers. The owner of the store asked the officer why he was purchasing the items. Once told, the owner told Natal to take the items and give them to the family on his behalf. Natal went back to the Salvation Army and explained that one of the Milbert's children had a disability. The Salvation Army then agreed to fund the hotel room for the rest of the weekend. This had taken Natal beyond the end of his shift, but he never asked for compensation. The next day, Natal stopped to check on the Milberts, delivered some toys for the kids, and gave them his personal cell number to call if they needed anything. An employee at the Salvation Army had taken a picture of Natal and posted it on social media explaining the situation and the officer's compensation. The picture and story spread quickly. Numerous calls started to come into the police department from people wanting to donate to the family. The story also broke in the media and the family began receiving donations and job offers. Natal has continued to keep in contact with the family, which recently moved into a home. Milbert's first thought the day Natal stopped was, now my kids are going to be ripped from me. She now has a renewed outlook on life and has referred to Natal as an angel that saved my life. The officer went beyond the call of duty and freely gave his personal time and money to help strangers in need. He's a true humanitarian. Natal has served the department and community selflessly for over 17 years and could not be more devoted and dedicated. He's a mentor to his peers. Officer Natal is presented the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Next is Trooper Caleb Kerr, Florida Highway Patrol. On January 1, 2016, Trooper Kerr was sent to a disabled vehicle on I-75 in Sarasota County. Kerr found the vehicle in the center southbound lane with no lights on. An unresponsive woman was slumped over in the driver's seat. Kerr immediately requested EMS. Then he broke the passenger's window to gain entry into the locked vehicle pulled the unconscious female out of the vehicle and carried her to safety. Kerr then returned to the vehicle and pushed it off the roadway to prevent any further traffic hazards. This was all done in 70 mile per hour heavy traffic with fog rolling in. Kerr stayed with the driver and monitored her conditions until EMS arrived and evaluated her. EMS found that the driver had experienced a medical event. They treated her and released her at the scene. Kerr contacted the driver's husband and remained with her and the vehicle until the husband arrived to take her for further treatment and make arrangements for the vehicle. Two EMS members who arrived on scene stated the trooper's actions were nothing short of above and beyond heroic. Trooper Kerr has presented the Congressional Preservation of Life Award. Next is Trooper Brent Fitzpatrick of the Florida Highway Patrol. On October 23, 2016, Trooper Brent Fitzpatrick responded to a reported hit and run on US 40 in Bradenton 
and a second crash involving the same vehicle. He found that the operator appeared to be having a seizure. Fitzpatrick requested EMS response and opened the, door, the driver's door. The driver had a weak pulp and appeared to be unresponsive and not breathing. Fitzpatrick repositioned the driver to help open his airwave and yelled at the driver to try and get some response. It took several minutes for the driver to open his eyes. He did not appear to be focusing. His eyes were very constricted. He was very pale and went in and out of consciousness. Fitzpatrick felt that the driver was showing signs of a heroin overdose. EMS arrived, transferred the driver to the ambulance and administered Narcan. The driver then became alert and responsive. The trooper's actions helped save the driver's life. Trooper Fitzpatrick is presented the Congressional Preservation of Life Award. Next is Master Sergeant George Taunton of the Florida Highway Patrol. Master Sergeant Taunton of Sarasota County has been with the Florida Highway Patrol for over 37 years. He has also served 29 years of active and reserve duty with the United States Army. Taunton became, began his career in Monroe County in 1980 and was transferred in 1981 to Sarasota County where he has been assigned to patrol the riot squad screen new applicants and investigations. He was at one point assigned to the Bureau of Investigations in Sarasota County, where he conducted internal and external agency investigations and then reassigned to Sarasota County. In 2000, he was promoted to Master Sergeant. He has embraced his duties as a first line supervisor and provided outstanding leadership. Taunton has received numerous commendations from agencies, including the Department of Treasury for his execution of high profile search warrants, the Oklahoma Department of Public Safety for, provi for providing dignitary protection to Oklahoma's visiting governor, the Northport Police Department for apprehending a burglary suspect and for assisting with a natural flood disaster, the Florida Department of Corrections for contraband interdiction efforts in various correctional institutions throughout the state, the Tampa Police Department for assistance with tactical response training assistance, the Florida Highway Patrol for his contraband interdiction activity, DUI enforcement, and professional demeanor. While working in conjunction with the DEA, he stopped a truck for failing to stop at a way station. This stop resulted in the seizure of 150 kilos of cocaine and numerous handguns. While assisting the U.S. Customs Service, he made a traffic stop, which resulted in the seizure of 321 pounds of marijuana. Taunton looks tough on the outside, but anyone who knows him or has been in need of assistance <laughs> knows that he is compassionate and caring. Taunton has personally made a difference in thousands of lives in the community. He has mentored numerous young law enforcement officers who have benefited from his training and witnessed his leadership by example. We thank the Master Sergeant for his military service and his continued service to the people of Florida. Master Sergeant Taunton is presented with a Congressional Career Service Award. Next is Sergeant Patrick J. Roberts of the Florida Highway Patrol. On November 12, 2016, Sergeant Roberts, a Manatee County supervisor, responded to a report that a female juvenile had threatened to commit suicide by jumping off the top of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Traveling northbound on the I-275 bridge, Roberts spotted a vehicle on the southbound side of the bridge, parked his vehicle, ran across the northbound lanes, jumped the burial wall, and crossed the southbound lanes to the vehicle. Roberts located the sus suspected jumper in the vehicle and started a dialogue with her. A short time later, the juvenile's father arrived on scene. The father and Roberts were able to pre prevent the juvenile from exiting the vehicle by leaning on the doors. Roberts was eventually able to gain entry into the vehicle, turn the engine off, and take the keys. The juvenile was then taken out of the vehicle and brought to her father's car, 
which was escorted from the top of the bridge to a secure location. The juvenile was then transported to the hospital and processed under a voluntary Baker Act. Robert's quick thinking and heroic actions prevented a young juvenile from committing suicide. Sergeant Roberts is presented the Congressional Preservation of Life Award. Next is Deputy Angel Buxita and Deputy Grant Stubbe of the Mantee County Sheriff's Office. On January 30th, 2016, Deputy Buxita responded to a call that an unknown person was in the water and yelling for help at Camp Flying Eagle on the Manatee River. Buxita arrived on the riverbank, jumped in the first watercraft he saw, and started paddling a canoe blindly upstream, calling out to the person needing help. He soon came upon a capsized boat and a father holding his five-year-old son's head above the water. The child's shirt was tangled in the propeller of the motor on the boat. The boy was having trouble breathing and was in hypothermic shock. Bugsita and another man on the scene freed the boy from the propeller. Two Boy Scouts on the scene removed some of their clothing to wrap up the child. Buxita worked with Deputy Grant Stubbe, who had arrived and was guiding Buxita to the river's edge. Once at the river's edge, Stubbe took the child and ran to awaiting emergency personnel. Both deputies assisted the EMS and offered words of comfort to the child. This incident took place in a heavily wooded location that could only be reached by boat. The air temperature was low and the water was extremely cold. In the face of all of this, the deputies ignored their own safety to render emergency assistance. Their efforts certainly saved this child's life. Deputy Buxita and Deputy Stubbe are presented with the Congressional Preservation of Life Award. Detective Timothy Speth and Investigator Lynn Thompson, Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. In June of 2016, Investigator Thompson and Detective Speth began investigating an organized scheme to steal large amounts of controlled substances from a local pharmacy. Through interviews with the pharmacy's loss prevention personnel and members of the pharmacy management team, it was determined that over a four-year period, the pharmacy manager was systematically stealing quantities of oxycodone, hydrocodone, carisoprodol, diazepam, hydromorphone, morphine sulfate, and alprazolam. Investigators found that the suspects coupled the names of local pain management physicians with false patient names to enter prescriptions into the system to steal controlled substance tablets. Thompson and Speth reviewed hundreds of pharmacy records and compared them to surveillance footage revealing a total of 426 fraudulent prescriptions, a total of 57,388 controlled substance tablets were stolen, 24 fraudulent patients' names were used, the pharmacists illegally used the names and DEA numbers of seven legitimate doctors in the Sarasota and Venice area. The pharmacist was able to manipulate the pharmacy register to make it appear as though the controlled substances being dispensed had been purchased. The pharmacist was also able to manipulate the ordering of additional supplies of controlled substances by using multiple suppliers. This exceptional investigation resulted in several modifications to the internal controls at the pharmacy, a lengthy prison sentence for the pharmacist, and a revocation of his license to practice. These results will undoubtedly have a massive impact on our community in the fight against this crisis. Investigator Thompson and Detective Speth are presented with a Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award.
next Captain John Walsh, Lieutenant Deborah Casper, Lieutenant John Barbie, and Community Affairs Director Caitlin Perez of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. Captain Walsh, Lieutenant Casper, Lieutenant Varney, and Ms. Perez have developed an innovative program that engages members of the community in a collaborative problem solving and decision making process called the Sheriff's Rightful Policing Strategy Workshop. The program involves a multidisciplinary approach, including a broad range of civic, faith, community, business, and philanthropic leaders. Approximately 300 residents of Sarasota County have participated as guests and or mentors for four workshops since the end of 2015. In addition to their normal duties, Walsh, Casper, Barley, and Perez work to ensure the workshop's success. Participants in the workshops learned a great deal about the decision-making process followed by law enforcement and the day-to-day -day operations at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. As a result, their opinions of their law enforcement community were more favorable. The four have implemented a dynamic program that positively influences relationships and interactions between law enforcement and community members while building trust and strengthening community relations. Captain Walsh, Lieutenant Casper, Detective Varney, and Ms. Perez are awarded the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Deputy Philip Mockler of the Sarasota County Police Department. Oh, they wrote police, sorry, it's sheriffs. Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. Prior to joining the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office in 2011, Deputy Mockler served in the United States Marine Corps and with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Mockler currently serves as a school resource deputy for Venice Middle School where he mentors several at-risk students and volunteers for the highly respected and sought after Venice Middle School Young Marines program. In 2016, he accompanied the Young Marines on a trip to Hawaii in honor of the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mockler also coordinates and facilitates the Junior Law Academy, a unique three-week academy that provides sixth and seventh grade students with behind the scenes exposure to the law enforcement profession. In addition, Mockler volunteers for the Sheriff's Activity League, where he assists in connecting students with programs that focus on teamwork, responsibility, and leadership. Finally, Mockler serves as Vice President of My Warrior's Place, a non-for-profit organization that serves the needs of veterans, military service members, first responders, and law enforcement families. Here he helps facilitate grief counseling, catastrophic relief assistance, veteran benefit assistance, retreat locations, boating excursions, and many other programs for those in need. Mockler continues to make a profound impact on Sarasota County. He is a father, a leader, and first responders whose life is dedicated to public service. Deputy Mockler is presented with the Congressional Dedication and Professionalism Award. Well, that's a good one. That's it. Let me just say what incredible stories. Uh, this is what men and women do every single day. I wish everybody could see this in my congressional district. Let's give everybody a big round of applause. Some of you probably know this, but some of you might not know it. We give out the nice awards in the blue, but in the package, this goes into the congressional record. We'll be there forever. 
We filed all these in a congressional record. A member of Congress has to do it. So your great, great, great grandchildren, they can look it up. And that's what makes this night so special. And I'm just proud to be able to do that for the men and women uniform here that make us make such a big difference. I just want to thank you for all you can con uh, continue to do. And uh, I, you know, I, I know that sometimes you feel like you're out there by yourself or your team, but just know our office, we've got your back and we're going to do everything to make sure that you get the resources and things you need from the federal government. But thank you. Thanks for your service. God bless you and God bless America. If we could have everybody that's received the award come up and uh, we're going to do a group picture and then if you want to like get a picture with the congressman afterwards we can do that but we'd like to get the uh, group picture done first. <laughs>